My name is Kevin Riggs. I'm one of the three pastors, but the best preacher up here is Eric Jacobson. <laughs> now, I get a little emotional, but I'll do my best. Um, but it, this is a great day, um, a day that, to be quite honest, got here quicker than we thought would, if you consider the timeline. And um, it's, just, it's just fabulous. And I think it's a historical day, and one day you'll be able to tell people uh, that, that you were here. Now, if you want to come by, I said this at MLK, that my goal for retirement is to come down here and sit on one of these benches and drink a milkshake and watch people look at the statue and the signs. And so I will be down here sometime Saturday <laughs> with a milkshake, milkshake? <laughs> just watching. And so come join me, all right, and uh, just keep celebrating this glorious day. But anyway, a couple years ago, after the tragedy in Charlottesville, we held a prayer vigil right here in downtown Franklin, in front of our courthouse, where we're standing right now. And I had the privilege of speaking at that rally and, and talked about our city's own need for healing, lingering wounds from bygone days. The next day, Eric Jacobson, whom I did not know at the time, reached out to me and we met for coffee, and he began sharing his ideas about providing historical context to our Civil War monument. And I just listened. But not long into our conversation, I interrupted Eric and told him that what he was saying may sound good to me and him, two middle-aged white guys, but what we thought really didn't matter a whole lot. I told him we needed input from our African-American brothers and sisters. For too long, their stories have been left out, marginalized, and ignored. And so I, and so I told Eric he needed to meet two of my African-American pastor friends and listen to their stories and their concerns. And I didn't tell my two friends that this historian was going to call them. I just left it at that and didn't want them to know anything. Hewitt, Chris, and myself have been friends for over 20 years. Between the three of us, we have 70 plus years of pastoral ministry in Franklin, Tennessee. This just didn't happen overnight, in other words. This came out of relationships. We have spent years talking and listening and praying about race relations in our city and in our country. Eric met with them, and then the four of us met together, and the rest of the story is still being written. From the very beginning, we decided we wanted to build something up instead of tearing anything down. We decided we wanted to do something that would unite our city instead of divide us. We also felt strongly about sharing stories from the perspectives of the slaves and what they overcame. Their story is one of triumph and endurance that should inspire all of us. We also sensed that we had an opportunity to show other cities how to lovingly and courageously interact with a difficult period of our history. It was also important to us that churches lead the way. Our goal has never been to tell a complete story, just a fuller, more inclusive story. Our desire is not to erase history or to rewrite history. Our desire is to embrace history, engage in history, and uplift our unsung heroes. The book of Proverbs tells us, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. The markers being unveiled today and the creation of a statue to the United States Colored Troops that begins today, do that very thing. Speak up for those who can't speak up. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a beautiful day.
This is a beautiful day. This is a glorious day. This is a historical day. But this is not the end. This is the beginning of telling a fuller story, a more complete story, an honest story. This is the beginning of telling our story, black and white, freed and enslaved, privileged and oppressed. It is in telling our stories that we are united as one. The psalmist tells us stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord and about his power and his mighty wonders.